what do I think will happen when I go back to Uganda? The first thing first is the minute you even reach at the airport, the immigration officer who can even be best and begin asking, so tell us, are you a man or a woman? Hello, our viewers. A very good evening to you all. It's your host, as always, Mabel, with Out and Proud. Today, we're not having a sofa conversation. We're having a special guest with us from Uganda. She's here with us in our studios today. She's going to be telling us about her life and, well, tell us some juicy stories. I am very, very eager to hear what she's going to be telling us. Hope you've all had a lovely weekend. Well, God blessed us with a few showers of rain. It was really amazing. The weather has been very cool this week. Well, now to our visitor today. Could you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Hello, viewers. My name is Amanda Commander, and I'm a transgender woman. My pronouns, she, hers, and I'm glad to be on this show. Thank you. Yes, as you've heard, she's called Amanda Kamanda. Such a lovely name. It just rhymes so nicely. How did you come up with this name? Is it like your birth name or you just changed it? So um, the name Amanda was like my preferred name that I derived from my family name. So Kamanda is the family name that I always keep because it reminds me of my African heritage and, you know, being an, a, a black person. I have like, a, I have roots that I come from. So I decided to keep my family name and from my family name, I'm, I derived the name Amanda, my preferred name. Yes. Well, that's really amazing. That's a really brilliant idea to come up with. Well, our viewers are eager to hear who is Amanda Kamanda. So, um... Amanda Kamanda, I'm a transgender woman and I'm a student. I'm doing my master's degree in international development, social justice and sustainability. And also part time, I do things like modeling, singing, and you know, basically literature, reading. Yeah, that's it about me. Congratulations on the Miss Trans Global Beauty Pageant. We wish you all the luck and we are there to support you. Amanda is one of the first Ugandan women to come up to be part of this pageant and we're looking forward to hearing from we're looking forward to her success and to see where she's going to move forward with this. Uh tell us how did you how did you join this pageant? So um I I, I wanted to create a a pathway that was unique in representing the visibility for us as you know LGBT specifically as trans and in Uganda there is no pageant that is inclusive for transgender women to participate including the Miss Uganda Miss Tourism all these beauty pageants and as trans people we we, we needed our own space we needed our mm. own visibility so Miss Trans Global is a space that represents trans women in terms of modeling and pageant and it's one of the ways that we can claim our own existence and visibility. And it had never had a Ugandan participant before. And I set the record and precedent by being the first ever applicant from Uganda and also the first ever to be selected because there was a criteria to be followed. Mm. You had to send in your photos, you had to do like a walk, you had to fill in a form and all these things. And after following through the procedures and going through the judges and being interviewed, I was able to make it through the preliminary first round and look for it in the bigger international competition. Well, that is really, really amazing. That is really amazing. And we're honored to have you on this platform. As OPAO members, I believe they're all really honored to have you. Well, going back to who Amanda is, you're now here in the UK. Could you tell us a bit more about your life in Uganda? Because Uganda is a homophobic country and being a transgender person, well, it comes with its ins and outs and downs and all mostly the laws uh, how have you managed through so speaking about my experience as a transgender woman from uganda and when i was living there i i, I remember that i could I, I, I could not really be myself in terms of my gender expression mm -hmm. being transgender comes with risks in terms of visibility of who you are and that the way I lived my life was part-time, 
by part time i mean when i know i'm inside like a certain closed space inside the gate i can be myself i can put on my makeup put on this outfit and be like oh but the minute i'm living outside the gate when i know i'm going to face the border borders or the like generally the public i, I can't present as you know the, the person i would have been i have to put on like a tough masculine you know appearance or wear baggy clothes or even mm. sometimes keep quiet because if you if I'm expressive that will be the indicator that will give me off and someone will be like mm, this person something is not right about them mm. so i always found myself that i would keep quiet even in public spaces i'm like mm, just to be invisible not to draw attention to myself mm. or wear baggy clothing that will not make me stand out mm. or not to wear makeup at all and present in a way but it was making my life miserable Mm. Because if you as a transgender person decided to express your gender and you decide to walk out on the streets you'll be abused you can be attacked hate crimes and mm. there there won't be justice for you in fact by the time the police comes they'll find you bleeding stones what 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 you know and the attitudes of the people themselves they are very hostile mm. yes mm. so um Have you ever been discriminated against for your sexual orientation before? Yes, I have been and for me it 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 goes deep in terms of even the privilege that you get. Sometimes being transgender comes with its own, you know, with its own difficulty. Your, your own friends Mm. The minute you you you're, you're in school, they begin saying, "Ah, we can't make friends with that one. You're always that the, the loner kid." Because mm. generally the way you present you either seen people will make fun out of you or students themselves you find themselves your own classmates shun you and the other part is in terms of you know when you're looking for a rental mm. and you're trans the landlord does not know these things how do you explain the fact that, that even the neighbors will tell the landlord today we see this person they came like this but at night we see a person walking out in a dress <laughs> we don't understand this person mm. and the landlord ha- sometimes they evict you and they don't even you know like give you back your money for rent they just evict you direct and you can't even use an appeal cuz they'll use that as a basis to snitch out to the police mm. well this still goes back on to who Amanda is How, uh, when did you first become familiar with your identity with who you are when did you come out and say like mm, I am a transgender person. I I I I I knew that there was something different about me but I could not define it. The word transgender had never even crossed my mind on how do you how do you term a person you know like that is different because for me I always knew I'm, I'm I'm a different kid that's the only thing. Mm-hmm. And growing up I always found myself drawn to things that were feminine, playing with dolls. You want to be the one to do that even play that if you're playing a video game you want to pick the female character everything and sometimes the, the people would begin calling you names they'll begin mm. boy girl boy girl and you know so uh, okay they're calling me boy girl and stuff now transitioning to the higher levels of education people now mm. started getting calling you terms you'd be there someone going say are you gay because they're not understanding how to term you mm. and many of us even we didn't know what transgender was they, they only knew two things you're either lesbian okay. or you're gay Those are two things. You can't be over by, even bisexual not even by the time that you could be mm, people only knew those two things. So, when I started, you know, advancing when I was coming towards university and I was like researching on the internet because our our this the privilege we have in this generation is we have access to the internet. Mm. So for me, with my curiosity, I was like mm Yeah, I'm I'm not aligning with because when when I was being called gay they they assumed that my my identity that I felt I was a man and I felt that I was you know attracted to fellow men and that's how they always termed the whole gay thing but mm. for me in in the way I felt about myself I was like no I I don't identify as gay that's not me so the only way I could define myself was research because mm. I had this passion of trying to read things and I would go to the internet and I was like ah oh, So now this is what I am and and that's when I found the word transgender and I started googling reading about and the feeling was resonating with what I identified what I felt and I was like yeah uh-huh. this is now the moment this is it this is it <laughs> uh well um well still on that same bit uh could you take our viewers through the process of you coming to terms with who you are 
being in a homophobic environment and you know other friends the family and so on um that's a very good question the process of coming to terms with your sexuality is often not spoken about but it's a rigorous process if you come from a homophobic country it it also it, it has an it, the culture has a way it shapes you mm. the first stage that i always emphasize when i tell me people is denial even you yourself you're like mm, i cannot be i cannot be those <laughs> things mm-hmm. and when you're in denial even when people call it to you sometimes you find yourself fighting back when they call you like they insult you oh you're gay oh you're trans you're lesbian you're what you find yourself also t- attacking them back and abusing them because you, you can't you, you're not okay with it then the next phase you, you become angry now what happened is the anger you'd take it on on people who are openly LGBT. If you if you'd meet someone who's LGBT, you also insult them because you're trying to remove that bad feeling. You're trying to fight off the, the person of who you who are. are. It's you're deflecting. So when you meet a person who is LGBT, you're like, eh, you're the one doing those things. You're the mm. failure. You're the what? Yet deep inside, you know. <laughs> Now you find yourself you're abusing them but you're still miserable. Mm. Then you begin going into depression. You're like what's wrong with me? Why aren't I happy? And the thing is sometimes even uh, when you're living in a homophobic country there's a company you keep sometimes your friends can be straight. Their conversations will be about them sleeping with their girls. Mm. They'll talk about you know the conversations that will make you feel out of place and you're like, eh, am I in the wrong company? Am I in the right <laughs> company? Am I in the wrong? Am I the person who is so... So I would begin to feel, Mm-mm. and the depression kicked in. You listen to slow songs. You want to kill yourself. You're like, maybe I'm such a loss. Maybe I'm such a what? Mm. And usually at that stage, you're so vulnerable. If someone just comes and tells you that, ah, for you, you're LGBT a failure, you can't even commit suicide and you take your, your life. And for me, I remember during those stages, those stages were happening when I was in school. And school is among the unsafest places in Uganda. Someone can continually abuse you and stuff. And for me, I was at the point of killing my, myself. Someone had told me, hmm, you, what a waste. Hmm? For you, you, you wasted spam. You should just kill yourself. And yeah, that's it. And I realized that it was not about me, but about how other people feel felt because they are projecting from a place of hate and I had to pick myself up mm. and by the time I accepted myself I was just coming with this revenge of saying that okay I did not die now I'm here mm, mm. you had to, to put a murder out there yes. for them to see <laughs> that is a good attitude that at the end of it it really might have been must have been a, 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 a struggle and we're going through all those things. I understand a bit about it because I've, I've literally, you know, many of us have been through the same. Mm-hmm. So it could be very challenging and it is still very challenging to many. That is why we have this platform to make awareness, to let people know, like, you can make it because people are committing suicide and some are killing each other and they're killing people because they simply don't understand what they, what they are going through or they can't really understand who they are. Well, now, Amanda, we've heard about Amanda Kamanda in Uganda. Tell us about Amanda Kamanda in the UK. Okay, um, Amanda Kamanda in the UK. So I got here, like, I was so excited. I was like, oh, finally, I'm in the UK, the land of the Queen, the land of the British. I was so excited. I mean, I landed at Heathrow. I was like, yes, I'm here. But you see, they say the grass is always greener over the fence. So the green thing was, yeah, I'm finally here. But it also had its own, you know, ways of life. Mm. The good thing is you're in a country that is developed, the healthcare, the roads, the education, everything seems okay. But there are also other unique things, changes that come when you move to a new country. Mm. And for me, the one thing that I noticed here was the way of life, the social it's, it's a multicultural city. You can see Asians, you can see, you know, white, all these sorts of diverse, you know, races and cultures and ethnicities. But people tend to mind their own business in terms of individualism. Mm. You can die in your house and no one will even come and no, maybe the dead body will be the one to alert people that someone has died in this house. 
of which back then in Uganda, people cannot mind their own business. They will say, ah, there's another son of so-and-so, the daughter of so-and-so. People have a culture of greeting. And if you don't greet a person, they'll even go and report it to your mother. So-and-so, your child does not greet. <laughs> Bypass tasks. They it's an offense. It's an offense. <laughs> but here in the UK, you can even put in your headsets and you're like, today, I'm not going to talk to anyone until I get to my destination. Mm-hmm. You'll go through the train, you'll go through the bus, you'll go through, and you'll not even speak to anyone. And no one has the time for you. No, but I you, you try doing the same in Uganda. They'll even kunyakula your things from here and show you that you have to greet people and be conscious of your environment. <laughs> I know, I know. So, um, have you ever been uh, discriminated against here in the UK? As 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 a as a, tra- as a trans person, I I cannot say that I've experienced it in terms of the service provision, but within our own community as Black people, because not all people that live coming from Africa, come with open attitudes and open mindsets. Mm. Some people come from conservative countries and carry these beliefs alongside with them. And they Mm. also come to the UK for various reasons. Someone is here for studies, they're here for business, they're here for sports, or various reasons. And pretty much for them in their their culture, they still have that attitude. And when they meet you on the streets in the UK, Mm. they'll still be in shock like, "Eh, Lord, what is this? What am I looking at? They begin also uh, judging you by their perspectives. Yeah. It does happen. But overall, within, you know, the healthcare systems and all these other, it's, it's, it's okay. You're not going to, like, there's advocacy. There's a, a policy change in some of these things. Well, I should say the green shed still has its own benefits because at least you're, you're in a safe place, I should say. Although discriminate against you, but it's on very low chances that you'll, you'll, most, you'll be attacked as unlike back home where it's ninety nine percent you will be attacked the moment they identify who you are. So uh could you still tell our viewers about well how you are living your life right now in the UK? Like what is Amanda up to? What you know? So my 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 life generally revolves around like school for now. Sometimes I, I find myself reading in the library and the UK is one of the countries with very good educational institutions. Mm. So when you get a, a, a privilege to be in, in, a, in, a, in a space like this, you use it to the most. So mm. I find myself reading. And on other days, I, I can do photo shoots where I can go out on the streets, even if I'm dressed in whatever way, and take it. In Uganda, we're going to do an open photo shoot with people passing that will even congregate and gather attention and begin even using that opportunity to hurl insults at you. Mm. So I've been doing that and even access to hormones as a trans person. In Uganda, we, you can't access that. Our system mm. does not recognize us as trans people. In the UK, I get hormones. I go to the, get to the health facility. I have my, my blood checked every time. They monitor my levels and I'm accessing these services. In Uganda, I can't. Mm. So my life is it's, 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 it's better compared to back home in Uganda as a trans person, mm. I get my hormones, I can openly, you know, express my gender, even when I'm walking on the streets, mm. I, 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 I feel protected. Because mm. I, 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 I can't be myself in Uganda outside on the streets. Okay. Yeah, I know. Well, you'll be that will be you putting yourself at risk. Well, we've heard about Amanda's life. So, are you in a relationship right now? My 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 relationship status is complicated, but right now <laughs> I just decided to focus on my books because I kind of feel like when you begin to enter relationships and they mix up with your education, you can't even concentrate. Every time you'd be thinking of your partner, texting back and forth. But as a as a as a as a you know as a university student, you know how universities can be. You know when it comes to dating and things like that, people mm. go out on nights out, and as as. As a queer community, it's also not easy when it comes to dating. So, which is where I'm like, for now, I'm just so focused, you know, just on your studies. Yeah. And yeah. Well, um, I think I'm enjoying saying your name, Amanda Kamanda. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Yes. Well, still, um, uh, could you tell us how you would, um, how you view, you're viewing your life now? How different is your life? Here now, from your life back home in Uganda. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna describe the changes in a thematic sort of way, 
I'll begin with um, education. I can I can attend school in the UK as a transgender person, expressing myself openly and even go in class. Mm. And I cannot do that in Uganda. In Uganda, when I even express myself, that's already grounds for expulsion because some schools have it in their policy that there's a certain dress code for students and a certain sort of way they expect you to behave. Mm-hmm. So when you dress that sort of way, you'll be summoned in the principal's office. The next thing, they'll call a parent. and uh, mm. So that's the first area I can give. The second area I can also give is um, health-wise. In, in, in Uganda, going to a facility that is friendly, it's because people are doing advocacy and changing it. But in general, when you go to any health facility randomly like this, the doctor will begin again asking you questions. I don't understand this. I don't understand this. Explain why this. But here, the system understands who we are as trans people. Mm. And we even they provide us the hormonal therapy as trans people to help with our transition. Mm. And after a certain period of time, the government also does cover the surgery costs. Oh, which really? in Uganda it's not covered, but the, the, the government amazing. doesn't even acknowledge that. Mm. The other area I would give is employment. In Uganda, when you're trans, you're only limited to two areas. You either work in an LGBT organization or sex work in general. People have to do sex work, and sex work is work. I believe that if someone can do something without having to steal, kill, or do malicious intent on a person, they're doing it in a way of hard work. Mm. And Trans people out there, most because of the circumstances, they are discriminated in Uganda. Going to ask for a job, someone will be like, you just are my customers, look at you. They are even presenting. How do mm. I hire you? Yes, um, congratulations again on the Miss Global, Miss Trans Global Beauty Pageant. Um, could you tell us more about what's going to happen on what stage you're, you're on or, you know, like what process are you st- going through? Because you've not, they've not, um, you've just, you're going through the stages. You they've not done the the last bit of it. Yeah. So which stage are you on, and what's the next plan in that regard? So um, for the next stage of Miss Trans Global, we're going to be creating content that will be used on social media to promote and create more awareness about it, mm. and. Some of the content will be in various categories in terms of um, outfits that are used in beauty pageants. Some include traditional outfits from our countries, so I'd have Mm. to showcase the traditional Ugandan outfit. Mm. Others include a cocktail dress. Um, There's always things to do with, um, you know, the inauguration gown to introduce myself and various other outfits that we'll be doing on social media to promote Miss Trans Global for the audience that can also participate in terms of voting, because there will be a stage where people will be voting for their favorite contestant. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, will this be the last bit of the pageant? Is this the last bit? Because you're, you're one of the finalists, right? Yes. So is this the last bit for them to like to pick up the winner? So the, 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 the winner is not yet announced until the voting process opens, okay. but also until they start showcasing to to what to to build more traction about it because on social media if you've noticed they've already started creating more awareness about it mm. and the audience is still waiting to see the various costumes and categories and the judges to begin you know scoring and all and the public itself so i must uh, this this is like more of like a preparing for like a semi final because it's mm. the final that awards who is the official international ah, winner okay so we are still doing content for promoting us for the audience to vote which with their favorite costumes and mm. for, for you know. So basically, you're just now on the semi-finals. Yes. So then to the finals, yes. where you'll still have to go through more tests and you yes know, and contests. Yes. Well, you just let us know. Just share, share your social media platform, and well, Opal is there for you. We are all there for you. We're going to support you to the fullest, and well, we want to see Amanda Commander there. Oh, thank you. Yes, and um, I saw you on. Is it Black Pride? Yes. How was your experience? Because I believe that was your first Pride yes. in the UK. The UK Black Pride was, you know, I, I, I've never felt diversity in one space because now I'm in, I'm, I'm in the UK and the UK being a multicultural space, 
having a pride that celebrates black people, especially in our diversity, queer, straight, or all this, it was one of the ways that I felt, you know, affirming and so happy. And even the music that was being played, mm. it, it, it had that, you know, some of the tastes from home that the music would always listen to. So I felt all free, which I've never seen happen in my country in terms mm. of freedom, yes. Okay, that's amazing. Did Were you part of the London Pride as well? Yes, I was also at the London Pride and it was also my first, you know, Pride in the UK, LGBTI Pride in the UK. And mm. even back in Uganda, I have not yet seen us come together as a community to celebrate Pride because of our context. Mm. So for me, it it felt, you know, Pride after even a long time of COVID and lockdown. Mm. So it was one of the big celebrations I was looking forward to. Oh, that's amazing. So um, what do you think, because I understand you're expressing yourself more here in the UK. What do you think will happen when you go back to Uganda? What do I think will happen when I go back to Uganda? The first thing first is the minute you even reach at the airport, the immigration officer who can even be burst and begin asking, so tell us, are you a man or a woman? They can even sometimes... D- d- put you under, you know, detention and searching you because mm. they, do, they, they, they don't understand. Sometimes you're at the mercy of the immigration officer. And if you're transgender, sometimes when in transit, you can be harassed and go through a rough experience. And when you're through with immigration and you're going out in the general public, mm. if I go back and I'm openly expressing as transgender with all the visibility I've gotten from Miss Trans Global, I can't even risk being attacked. Because now, Miss Trans Globe has given me a platform, being the first openly trans person to represent my country in a beauty pageant. Mm. I, I, I face risks in terms of going back and moving the public after putting myself out there and living my life openly. They can easily decide to you know, hate crimes and all these things that they do against LGBTI people. Where do you see Amanda Kamanda five years to come? Five years to come from now... In living in the UK in a new country, I look forward to the moment where I'll be integrated when I'm working in a in a in a stable job that accepts me as a trans person already. The fact that I'm in the UK and I would love to do consultancy work in terms of supporting projects back home in my country because I want to, you know, I'm 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 still passionate about helping, you know, other people from my community. Mm. And one of the ways I do, we can do that is through consultancy in projects and things that help back home, Af- things in Uganda and Africa as a continent. And pretty much the other thing also is f- finishing up with my transition as, you know, co- continue like with finishing up my HRT medication and continue discovering my own, you know, my gender identity and getting more comfortable with all the body changes that come with being transgender. Well, uh, what message do you have for people back home? My message to the people back home that are watching me on this podcast is there is always hope. There's life beyond just your sexuality. And sometimes, especially for the people that could be facing like, you know, persecution in the, in the countries that they're in, you can't openly express yourself. And like I, like I, 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 I reinforce a message of, looking forward to the day that you can be yourself and it takes patience and it takes courage for you to make a decision to move to another space where you can be yourself and have your freedom but at the same time it also keeps you resilient from the context where you are to continue pushing for your rights and looking forward to the day that a change can happen so my message to the politicians the conservatives, all those priests and people that always have negative attitudes towards LGBTIQ persons, I would say that they're being discriminatory and not respecting human rights. But also, I would love them to acknowledge that we are African, we are Ugandan, we exist as queer people from where we come from. It's not a Western concept. We're not being taught to be queer. We're not being forced to be queer. We're doing it it's because who we are, it's it's ingrained in us as part of us and they should respect us and protect our rights. Well, uh, do you have anything or a message that you would like to contribute to share with our viewers today? So I'd like to call 
on the support from our viewers in terms of pushing like for our rights at the same time me personally as Amanda Kamanda to request for their vote and support in the Miss Trans Global Beauty pageant they can follow the pageant on Facebook at Miss Trans Global and on Instagram Miss Trans Global and to continue looking for updates on the pageant and to follow us and support thank you well, that is Amanda Kamanda. We've had her with us today in our studios and it's been such an amazing evening. We've had a lot from her. She is the Miss Trans Global participant and we need to support her. We need to show her support. We need to vote for her when the time comes. And yes, she is now a part of Out and Proud. She's part of this big family and she's willing. She is waiting for your support guys who are there who are going to be following just follow uh, just follow the pageant on facebook and instagram and then you'll get to hear more from that it's such an amazing opportunity guys it's our turn so we need to be there we need to take this platform on again we need to create awareness it is our turn as uganda to show people that we do exist we can do this and we are part of this it's running and we need your support you guys thank you so much for being with us it's always an honor to share with you do not forget to like subscribe and click on the bell notification for your notifications whenever we are tuned in it's your host mebo nalwaz as always thank you very much have a lovely weekend see you tomorrow at the house party <laughs>